1999, Belinda Green observed a fractal in the Mandelbrot set that looked remarkably like the iconic image of the Buddha meditating. And to be honest with you, I have absolutely no idea what a Mandelbrot set or a fractal is. Because I'm a creative writing major for a very specific reason, so let's look at YouTube and figure that out. The first thing we need to understand is that this entire thing is happening in the world of complex numbers. Okay, so if you remember complex numbers, the complex plane, the way that we view this... In the world I live in, numbers are already complex enough is that we have two axes and we plot on this plane numbers of the form say a plus bi and here these two things are real numbers wait so what are the numbers that aren't real are they like catfishing on the internet and i is a symbol that means that i squared is equal to minus one okay so most people are familiar with this but just a reminder it's a oh yes of course i definitely knew that beforehand Convenience in some sense, but there's also a lot of useful information in this representation. So for example, one thing that's very natural to look at is if I plot some complex numbers. Okay, so then she goes on about this for like 10 more minutes. And so basically, I don't understand any of this and it's very confusing. So let's move on. Even if I can't understand the really mathy side of all of this, the fractals of the Mandelbrot set mean a lot to a ton of people. Like, I was looking through YouTube, and I found basically hundreds of videos, some of them hours long, of just zoom-ins of fractals in the Mandelbrot set. So basically, the Buddha brought in the Mandelbrot set itself show that not only is a random, difficult-to-understand mathematical equation capable of producing beauty, but that it can also produce images that humans can interpret as representational. At the end of the day, Buddha is just the product of an equation, but our subjectivity leads us to read it as the image of the Buddha, thereby placing all the ideas and feelings that we associate with the Buddha, whether that be the precepts of the religion he founded, the products that his image is plastered on, or so on. For me, this provokes questions about the role of intention in the creation of beauty and meaning. So much of the conversation that surrounds art and literature is fixated on the underlying textual discourse. So what does it mean for us to see meaning in the Buddha Brat? The Buddha Brat has no artist statement, no manifesto. The Buddha Brat does not do interviews with CNN or have an About Me tab on their personal website. Buddha Brat appears to exist outside the confines of intentionality, yet it's still able to convey representational meaning. Yet perhaps the Buddha Brat's reliance upon subjectivity in order to produce meaning is not too far off from how human-produced texts actually work. When we read a book, there is a collective understanding. The letters on the page stand in for sounds, a stand in for words, a stand in for a greater meaning. On canvas, blocks of paint equal trees. Are these not equations too? Yet like the serendipity of finding the Buddha amidst the void of the Mandelbrot set, much of the beauty of art comes from the things we do not intend. In film, D.W. Griffith referred to this as the wind in the trees. Bob Ross referred to this as happy accidents. Seeing as we started with the world of math and numbers, it feels fitting to revisit, to turn our mathematician's phrase on its head, the complex world of numbers. Consider how the existence of the Buddha brought within the Mandelbrot set reflects our own humanness through the language of numbers. Humans can play at this game too. In Della Soul's song The Magic Number, the number three transforms from a mathematic objectivity to signify our personhood. The use of three represents the strength and members of Della Soul fire from each other. Yes, it is. It's the magic number. Somewhere in this hip hop soul community, was born three means Della me, and that's the magic number. Difficult preaching is posthumous pleasure. Pleasure in preaching starts in the heart. Something that stimulates my music in a measure. Measure in the music breaks in three parts. Casually see, but don't do like the soul. Seeing and doing no actions for monkeys. Doing hip hop hustle, no rock and roll. Unless your name's Bruce, look at Bruce, does a funky. Parents let go, cause it's magic in the air. Criticize and rap, cause you're out of order. Stop looking, listen to the freight afraid of stairs. And don't get offended while makes those close your daughter. Try camera roll system is now set. Fly up the store on a daisy production. Stands for the inner sound, you're the yoga pet. Then the action. Not a trick, a show, not a function. Maybe you can subtract it. You 
can call it your lucky partner Maybe you can call it your adjective But odd as it may be Without my one and two, where would there be? My three makes possibly, and that's the magic number What does it all mean?